One day after a New York jury found former President Donald Trump guilty, he is lashing out at the justice system. He was convicted on 34 felony counts related to a scheme to influence the 2016 presidential election. Speaking at Trump Tower, Mr. Trump insisted without evidence that the verdict was rigged and driven by politics. And he said he plans to challenge the decision in court. So we're going to be appealing this scam. We're going to be appealing it on many different things. He wouldn't allow us to have witnesses. He wouldn't allow us to talk. He wouldn't allow us to do anything. The judge was a tyrant. And you got to see that with Bob Costello, a fine man. I've never seen anything like it. The former president also said that he had wanted to testify in his trial, a right that he opted not to exercise. Had he taken the stand, prosecutors would have been able to cross-examine him. Before speaking about the case, he attacked his election opponent, President Joe Biden, on immigration and tax policies. The Biden campaign released a statement in response to the former president's remarks. And it reads in part, America just witnessed a confused, desperate, and defeated Donald Trump ramble about his own personal grievances and lie about the American justice system, leaving anyone watching with one obvious conclusion. This man cannot be president of the United States. Unhinged by his 2020 election loss and spiraling from his criminal convictions, Trump is consumed by his own thirst for revenge and retribution. Tark joins us now after speaking with local voters about the impact the former president's conviction will have at the ballot box, at least in their minds. A lot of people are talking about it. You know, I caught up with a lot of people, voters outside of the Duval County Courthouse today. And they were divided on Mr. Trump's future and whether he should be America's next president. Duval County voters are sounding off about the historic conviction of Donald Trump. Ron Williams calling the conviction a farce, a travesty, and a miscarriage of justice. I don't know all the ins and outs, but I know this. I know I was better off when Donald Trump was president than I, went, than I have been since he hasn't. Devon Roberts says the conviction is the best thing that could have happened to America because... When you have somebody like that that want to separate the country, put whites against blacks, uh, support all this mega. It's the best thing that could have happened. It might not do anything, but it shows that justice is for everybody. The former president is now a convicted felon. That's crazy. Brittany LaFerge says she didn't know about Trump's conviction until we told her. She says the conviction still doesn't change her vote. Do you think it'll change whether or not people vote for him or not? I mean, honestly, no, because like he, he was he did his job while he was in the office, so, and when he was in the office, it, everything was a lot better. I'm just hoping that it doesn't create some kind of a civil disper dis disturbance that is harmful. The jurors have spoken. Ed B says he's concerned about political violence leading up to the 2024 election, similar to the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. B says he thinks America is desperately in need of a president other than Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Here's what he said about the conviction's impact on the way Americans vote. He has a very energized base, and I don't, I don't think no matter what the verdict was, they're going to stick with him. I do think there's a significant number of undecideds that may be swayed by this. And maybe everyone should stop and pause and think, do we want a president that's also a convicted felon? D'Artagna Cobble Jr. tells News for Jax he thinks the jury of 12 reached their verdict based on the evidence that was presented. It's kind of expected, just waiting on it to happen, because he's had so many allegations brought against him. I don't see why it hadn't happened sooner. Now, the voters we spoke with today also pointed out that they look forward to the debates where they can actually hear where the candidates stand on issues that directly affect their lives versus the candidates' lives. Kent?